So my name is Emmanuel Rodakinelli from Tanzania. So I will be presenting the Committee Based Forest Governance in Oliondo. And uh, just to start, I am among the ICANN team that I benefit from the project. I have a master's in geography from the University of Victoria, which was actually funded by ICANN and ICC partly and I was working with a local NGO known as Parsev in Loliondo. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the work of ICANN was to research or to identify the most effective design for community-based conservation programs by studying the impact of a range of conservancy experiments on local livelihood, attitudes, natural resources practices. So these areas are part of the ICANN project. So in that mind, my thesis was about assess, assessment of effectiveness of a community-based conservation approach used by pastoral villages in Oliondo, which is in northern Tanzania, of which my thesis actually looked or produced two papers on assessing the governance effectiveness of that particular uh, model, but also evaluating socio-ecological contribution of the model to local livelihood and uh, uh, biodiversity conservation. But today I won't be presenting about my thesis. When I heard about this meeting, it's all about CICADA and uh, ICCA. Then I was interested in uh, presenting another conservation uh, model, which is actually done in Loliondo, which is about forest conservation. So because it's about uh, ICCAs, then I said this is a good chance to bring a new thing to ICANN and also to ICCA. So today I'll be presenting about a, a community-based forest in Mpuserosambu village, or what? And actually the area is found in northern Tanzania. As you can see here, this is a map of Tanzania and actually this is northern Tanzania. And uh, the area where I'm, I'll be talking about is almost here in a red dot. And the other areas where you can see the dots is where I did my master's program. So it's just an extension of uh, another area within the, the region. So, as I said, it is found in northern Tanzania, in uh, Gorongoro district, in Loliondo division, within Oksorosambua. And uh, the forest covers four villages, namely Ngarwa, Okiuju, Nan, and Oksorosambu village. The size of that forest is more than 7,000 hectares. But the forest itself has a bit of history. That uh, the forest was formerly known as Loliondo II Forest. It was a government forest before. So there was Loliondo I and Loliondo II. And uh, that forest was under the central government until 2013. But in 2013, in October, the management of the forest was transferred from the central government to the local communities by the central government itself. But that has been, uh, it has taken a process more than a decade of uh, trying to persuade the government that uh, this forest should be given to community because it was not well protected. So some people like Samuel Nangiria, who is one of activists in that area, had evacuated for that until it happened in 2013. And that is from is the experience that the community around have with the other part of the Serengeti National Park, whereby communities have been moved around by the Arabs uh, who have, have a hunting block there. So communities at uh, the Sambu say that we have to find a way to take out the land and that's to try, try to see if we can have our, our own management of the forest. So currently the forest is under uh, a management authority known as the Sambu Forest Trust. So the way it is governed, or oh, the significance of the forest, therefore, are yeah, generally it's all about conservation of natural resources, biodiversity and wildlife. That's all about diversity of trees and uh, species. Also, wildlife you can find there. Columbus, a lot of them there. 
but also it conserves, it is an area whereby um, the sources of uh, big rivers flows to Serengeti ecosystem and uh, lake natural are found. So it's a very crucial area to be conserved. But locally, it's a local livelihood, many pastoralism, people there practice pastoralism, so the area is a sustainable land use management, so people conserve and at the same time they benefit from livestock keeping. But also the area is uh, crucial to local people that uh, ceremonies, languages, uh, right of passage, architect, those things have to do with the community are done within the forest. So there is a connection between the people and the forest. So after they get uh, authority to manage, then the community staff found, find ways to manage the forest. So there was that management authority known as the Musulosam Forest Trust, which has a board members of uh, 13 people, uh, nominated from all the villages belong to the forest. And uh, there's a council of elders. Also that will, the, the, the trust will be reporting to them. And uh, then there is a village, community of villages that are uh, coming from the area. So this is a different model. Uh, aside from the model that we have in Tanzania, we have our forest, uh, village forests, whereby village council, there, there is a ward council, then there is a district level. So this, they said, we don't want to do anything with the government. So we are creating something different that will be community run, does not have nothing to do with the politics of the government. So they created this by themselves. So the forest actually, in IUCN protected area categories, it fall under category six, whereby sustainable use of natural resources is allowed. So we can say that it is part of a protected area according to the definition of protected areas. But also if we talk about governance, it falls under type D, which is govern governance by indigenous people and uh, local communities. And uh, if we go further and see how effective is that uh, kind of model, we could use a uh, IUCN uh, uh, principle of good governance to assess it is effective as well, but we can see, we can use things like legitimacy in the voice, direction, performance, accountability, and the fairness. So if you look, because it is a community-based uh, uh, initiative, you can see that people are participating for protecting the forest, but also when they want to make decisions, there must also be consensus most of the time because the locus of control is small compared with uh, when the central government is uh, really administering the forest. And uh, since we have been working there for quite a number of uh, years now, we have seen that uh, the many of forest include all community members, people are involved. So the appearance of these principles within that small scale um, initiative it is possible compared with the uh, affairs of these principles with a national park or with a game control area whereby communities are far apart from the management authority. So, uh, is it a, 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 a some forest a, a territory of life? Yesterday we were talking about uh, this territory of life or ICCAs. So, just to look at uh, whether this can fall there. Then we can see, yesterday Gracia told us uh, there are three uh, characteristics that evaluate uh, a community-based conservation thing, whether it is a territory of life or not. So within the so sample forest, you can see that lo local livelihood and the natural resources conservation are uh, connected, but also we can see that communities make decisions over management of uh, the natural resources. But also you can see that the decision and the practice made are for the benefit of the local community and the natural resource conservation. So by saying that, we can say that uh, the Sample Forest uh, is a, a territory of life. So we are talking about ICANN project and ICANN is all about research and innovation in the community. So what are the opportunities there available in the Sample for ICANN project and other researchers that can tap on? Uh, currently, the community is trying to see whether they can have a, a, management, a management plan that will govern the forest. But in order to have that, there are some of activities or issues or things that you have to have in hand before you go that. And you can do even individually. So kind of uh, things like uh, resource inventory, those are kind of needed now, resource mapping, 
also to explore alternative local livelihood uh, that support conservation, traditional local knowledge related to conservation, local culture related to conservation, governance effectiveness. These are areas that our research can also go there and uh, really explore. So that is the end of my presentation. Questions for Michael? Michael, first question. Thanks, Michael. Uh, the state. Is the state totally absent in this? No, it's not absent, but it has no interference at the moment. They can just say, if you don't do good, we can take back the forest. That's what they are saying now. Mm -hmm. But they have granted the forest to the community, but they have those kind of words all the time. And uh, we have this big cooperation like GIZ and the uh, Frankfurt Zoological Society with interests of bringing these few things <coughs> like the many plan, they want to do it. And uh, they want to assess the forest and they, so that they can report that communities are not uh, consuming the forest very well. So the government have been watching and say, if you don't do well, we'll take back it. To, uh, I asked that, but I think it's John who mentioned uh, uh, then our strong is the idea that the state has this capacity to always come in and disrupt whatever is done in a context like this. And I ask that because I'm more, within what policy and legal framework does this embed itself? Is there a legal or policy framework within which mean, this is embedded? Yes. It is which a allows new, for this. This is a kind of a very unique within the policy uh, is not there. So it has been a problem a bit until now to make it go through. So it was a lobbying thing that did this and the government granted this. So most of the time, because they have already granted, some come back and say, this was a mistake. This was a mistake, but they have nothing to do because they have already given a letter and a certificate that this is already granted the community. But there is no specific law actually giving this kind of authority to the local community to manage it this way. But there is a village-based conservation, a village-based forest, of which it is within the law and within the policy. So I would add that to your list of research, research possibilities, looking at the policy institutional connection, how, what, what models can be offered for integrating this in national policy. Yes, and that's why we are trying to, for, to advocate for this, yeah, to see if we can advise for advocate for a policy that will grant law communities total authority, total management of the forest. We're going to go to John next. And this is very uh, interesting. I'm glad you complimented your work on the, on the, uh, the other villages uh, for this case study. Uh, I might have missed something, but I'm curious, did the forest devolve to the, uh, the community before it was declared as a territorial life, or was that at the same time? Um, in, in short, was uh, was there a process whereby the, the the state gave the village basically responsibility over the forest, and that was something of its own, and then you have the right, the, the, the power to declare it as a territorial life. Or was it because of ICCA that the federal government granted you that, uh, that right? Um, uh, the ICCA was not there. So it's just now we are trying to make a case to ICCA that this is also could, should be included within the territories of life, one of the ICCAs in Tanzania. Okay, so it's a proposal. Right? Yeah, this, we are making a case to them. Yeah. And the governance of the, of the forest, is that a, uh, a, a board or a smaller group, or is it something that the entire community has a, a say in or a stake in? Uh, so it's, it's really coterminous with the governance of the village. Yeah, uh, as I showed here, uh, there is a board, which is uh, so some forest trust. That trust, there's a board which is uh, nominated from the four villages along with the forest, of which they sit there for a term of three years. And that board, there's a council of elders that is also from those four villages. 
that also uh, is also a decision making body and uh, there is villages so only th those two uh, entities there but they are all from the community and they make decision according to the needs and the uh, things of the community and are people able to come in and, and take firewood and herbs can they use it for grazing in the, in the dry season uh, in, in short is this something that the community feels they have access to or is it sealed off Access is allowed everywhere. The Maasai growers are conserving, so the, the thing that they are not allowed to do all the time is to cut the trees for timber, but take the fire is allowed. And also to take a um, tree for construction, they can have to go to the, to the trust, they have an office there, they, have, they give a license to them, they go cut the identified trees and they, they carry on. So everything is going on as normal within the community. But also there is farming nowadays, so the trust is trying to make sure that farming is not much in the spite that. That's the area that we are working on right now. And that's why we need the management plan. So we have zones whereby people can do agriculture, people can grass the livestock areas for tourism because also we are developing uh, some kind of tourism within the, the, the forest. And that's why we want even to do an inventory so we know which resources where and where. So the tourists who will come there will know what's there and that will benefit the local community. Marco? Thank you. I'd like to make, make two points, two recommendations. And the first one is the most important. Um, because now we see that this, uh, there's always an ICCA struggle between the community and the government, and there are national power that may shift a certain time in history. Maybe a new party comes to power and the relation of partnership with special changes. So it is very crucial in my view that in the research at this stage you include one component which is the monitoring of the of the ICCA of the power system. And this monitoring uh, has to be constructed in a taking time, giving time, understanding the system, what the communities intersect within, but at the same time involving an ecologist. Mm -hmm. So and then anthropology can be in between and uh, you know explain and translate concepts, not words, from one to the other, in a sense that the system of monitoring will be put in place in the grid now between the two sides, the government and the community. And then monitoring is done by the community according to indicators that they have developed together and agreed with ecologists. And this requires to go deep into the local knowledge. It will take time. It requires an anthropologist. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is very important. The second thing is the historical dimension, dimension of it. ICCA uh, are ICCA because there is a relation that was there for centuries, if not more. And uh, so it would be good also to work on what is the continuity and the, the relation between previous management. Because it's not that before establishing the council, there was no actual informal management of the first by these people. So some elements may be incorporated in a way that we don't see, because it is the job of these elders to connect the past and the present. But it would be good as uh, anthropologists to know the governance before and the governance now, and to follow up on this, the historical dimension of it. Thank you very much. Uh, um, <clears throat> uh, a question and a, and a comment. Um, the first is, it, actually um, working off of this, it, it struck me that there are, well, at least two players, but perhaps most importantly, the player to please in this is the government, right? You said if they don't, um, if they're not good, the government will take it back, right? And I'm wondering, how, is it clear the assessment criteria of the government of what constitutes good, how they have to perform? Do they share the same kinds of criteria that you outlined here from the IUCN? Do they share the same kind of criteria that is um, embedded in um, determining it as a territory of life or right? And yeah, w what is that criteria? Um, the second, sorry, and the second is just actually a little plug to everyone. I am fascinated and working on, um, or, or request, fascinated and working on uh, this idea of committeefication 
<laughs> but like all of our, our government's efforts in, uh, often in East Africa take the form of a governance structure of a committee of a chairperson, in this case a 13, per, 13 person committee that has a chairperson, a secretary, a treasurer and members. This construction is everywhere and it's prominent in conservation as well and I'm working on um, a kind of line of research that looks at the impacts of that. So if any of you have experience, and I'm sure you do, all of you do, experience and insight that you could share with me on how that has worked and shaped um, um, uh, conservation pro processes through having to govern through the committee, um, the, both the advantages and the disadvantages, please talk to me over the next couple of days. I would love to hear from you about that. But, the, but my question to you in this in particular, in, in particular your research here, is sort of how do we know what the, how the government is going to assess this as good or not good and take it away? And, and so can people act accordingly or work on those criteria? Yes, so there is a difference between how the government assess what's good and what's not good compared to what, how the community will assess what's good and what's good. The government actually will look on biodiversity and how communities are not in the forest, things like that. And actually we are coming to disagreement with them right now according to a millennium plan that we want to put in place. So we had uh, GIZ wanting to support us in this. But the good thing is that we told them ahead of time anyone who wants to do a job with us, he must involve us from the beginning. So they have this, uh, what they call, term of reference for um, the consultant to come and to do the millennium plan. And they prepared it themselves and uh, we learned that they are submitting and finding um, a consultant. But when we come to learn, we have found that they ignored everything about culture, uh, about those things that are important to the local community. They are want to do like uh, resource mapping, inventories, those kind of which are technical and leaving aside the social part which is all about culture and the benefit of the local people, local language and uh, uh, traditional knowledge. So we went back to them and uh, we told them, wait a minute, we need to get involved with this and uh, the, let, let you share the, the, the TOR with us and they shared it with us and we put some input in it and we said that in order for us to agree with you coming to help us, you must incorporate the local culture, knowledge, and other things which have something to do with us. So yes, we don't agree with them because they have these pre-existing uh, frameworks that they have in the past, of which we are trying to challenge that this is not about conservation itself, but it's all about conservation and uh, us as people who are connected with the forest. Our culture, our tradition, and our way of life should be embedded or be together with the forest. So we're kind of moving forward with that, but still we don't know if they will agree or not. So that's how we are now. And uh, as you said, you want to pose a question to everybody else. Yes, uh, the experience that I have is just the same. We have this uh, board, we have a council of elders, still the same thing applies. The chair, the secretary are uh, there. So it's something that we, we need to explore with us. Stephen was next, and John has a little comment to add. Thank you, Mario. Uh, it's, it's really good work and a uh, very nice presentation. Um, other than the looming government threat, if you don't manage the forest well, what other threats do you see or uh, what challenges there is a community facing in managing the forest? Uh, maybe internal uh, generated, I mean, is the community on the same page on how to approach this? Are there some people who are interested in doing logging? Do you, for example, experience uh, challenges in making sure everybody conforms or uh, I mean uh, is the committee on the same page any other challenges in terms of external? 
Yeah, the challenge that we is uh, the forest now facing is mostly agriculture, cultivation. That's a big challenge. Logging is not that much. The community itself, like uh, the people from the area, are not interested in logging. But cultivation is growing a lot, and uh, that has something to do with uh, you know nowadays they uh, try to cultivate and they see the good maize and before they were have they have to sell the goods so they can't get the maize. But if I cultivate, I I can get it, and uh, the land is fertile, and they they are doing it intensively now. So that's a, a challenge. But also, it's not only that uh, they are seeing that they, if they do that, they get the food. But it has something to do with the experience that they have seen in the other area, like uh, uh, the Loliondo, the Arab people taking the, the land. So one of the strategy to make sure that they keep the land is to cultivate the land. If you cultivate, it's your land. And that's moving from communal ownership to private ownership. So although they still have small plots, but in the long run, who knows? The forest will be eroded, eroded, eroded. So that's why we are trying to make sure that we do the soon, the, as soon as possible to have a millennium plan in order to make sure that we control that kind of uh, cultivation. That's a big threat. Logging is from outside, not from the community. But community agrees that this forest needs to be conserved and accept. And also, there are kind of, uh, managing plan or zoning or we can say land use plan but it's not official mm -hmm. so we are trying to put something official there John, you want the last question? Just a quick question uh, you, you're working with Kesho Trust mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm curious whether the this process including the uh, proposition for it to be an ICCA is something that would that depended on Kesho Trust's uh, role uh, if Kesho Trust had been there, would this have occurred? Or was it going along and Kesho Trust was trying to help? Uh, Samuel, who is a founding of this forest, actually, that we did for that, he's supposed to be coming to this meeting as a honorary member to SCCA. So they are the one who pushing the agenda. We just facilitate them technically to be able to present some <coughs> of ideas. So when he was, uh, he was not coming, he delegated that I should go and speak on behalf of the forest and make the case. So we, the Kesho Trust, mostly we are interested at conserving this forest, but also looking on alternative livelihood that the local people could benefit from that. One of the things that we did, we have developed a campsite whereby community members themselves, we have worked with me, women endlessly, and they now we have a camp there, which we supported to some extent, so that the tourists will come and visit the forest. And also we are intended to use it as an area where we can have a field school from the state from Canada. So we are trying to make sure that we have some alternative value within the forest so that the community could value the, the consumption of the forest. That's what we are trying to do. Great. Thank you, Manuel.